I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we have some impressive properties to explore, including a pair of homes out east. This modern estate in Sagaponic filled with organic elements inside and out, and this comfortably curated family home in Bellport. And we tour this Tulum-inspired abode filled with distinct detail. Join us for a trip out to Chicago where we see how this designer brought new life to this historical home. But first, how this architect and his client remade a pre-war beauty overlooking Gramercy Park. When I come to visit, it seems like I'm visiting two old friends, both Lee and the project itself. Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. This week I'm coming to you from this impressive apartment in the exclusive museum tower high above Midtown. Check out this massive 36-foot wide great room with enough space for multiple seating areas and an inviting dining area, all against panoramic views of our fair city that change as you pass through the home. A sleek separate kitchen features a large island perfect for taking in the morning light over a cup of coffee. And the serene western-facing principal suite is the perfect place to wind down at the end of the day. One of four spacious bedrooms in this over 4,500 square foot home. Let's get started at this pre-war landmarked building overlooking New York's exclusive Gramercy Park. This duplex was a former 1920s doctor's office converted into a detail-rich home by architect Jonathan Dreyfus of CDR Studio and owner Lee Manners. Their collaboration created a truly unique home. Take a look. Hi, I'm John from CDR Studio Architects in New York City. And I'm Lee Manners of LMA Group. Welcome to my home in Gramercy Park. My wife and I selected Gramercy Park because of its central location. This building is pre-war constructed in the late 1920s. This apartment had previously been a doctor's office and was in terrible disrepair. It has great bones, 24 foot high ceilings and uh, stained glass, but most importantly, it's elevated above Gramercy Park, so you really feel like the nature of the park is part of your living room. One of the hidden challenges in New York renovations is how to accommodate for a lot of storage without it becoming an overbearing feature in the apartment. Near the apartment entry on the upper level, is a very flexible space that's mostly used by my wife and I as an office, but it has a Murphy bed, so it doubles as a third bedroom when the need arises. You're giving away all our surprises. The panelization of all the doors allows you to open and close the space to leave it open the majority of the time unless someone's staying in the room, so all the spaces feel connected. The living room is where we spend most of our time. The wood floor continues into the living room, but we decided to recess the carpet into the floor. The inset rug creates a room within the room and it brings a lot of warmth to a space that again connects to the park. It's kind of a, a nice nurturing area to relax. Entertainment was certainly one of the objectives when this apartment was designed. So there are certain elements like the built-in bar that adds a bit of sparkle and reflectivity to the space. He's even invited me over a few times. Yeah. The two-story space behind us is obviously one of the prominent features of the apartment and we have this chandelier made by a glass blower. He selected the glass based on the colors in the existing stained glass window. The stairs is the connector, both visually and in terms of circulation, but the stair also acts as a storage unit, essentially. Some of them you touch on and doors open, others you touch and drawers pop out. And the secret powder room. I love the look of people's eyes when they see the powder room tucked underneath the stair. Right, yes. The dining room has, in terms of furniture, one large glass top table, and it's surrounded by simple leather chairs. Underneath the stained glass window is a built-in bench, which doubles as a kind of larger gathering space for a larger dinner. It's all kind of built-in and integrated and connects back to the stained glass window. 
And then the dining room is connected in a very open way to the kitchen, which didn't exist in the doctor's office. So we were able to build a complete U-shaped kitchen with a combination of materials that are a little different than the rest of the apartment, from bead-blasted stainless steel countertops and cabinet faces to stone countertop at the island peninsula. My wife, Audrey, is a great cook. She loves cooking, so it is heavily used indeed. One of the things I always strive for when renovating an apartment is a close collaboration with the design team and the collaborative effort here could not have been any better. When I come to visit, it seems like I'm visiting two old friends, both Lee and the project itself. Thank you for visiting my home. Just after the break, we are in Bellport, Long Island at the waterfront retreat of Philip Thomas. Welcome back. Now we're in Bellport, Long Island at the longtime home of designer Philip Thomas. This is the place he comes to unwind and features a curated collection of objects and art, comfortable furnishings, and of course, views of the bay from virtually everywhere. Take a look. Hey there, I'm Philip Thomas, and I want to welcome you to my Bellport. I've been coming to Bellport since I was four years old, and for the last 36 years of my life, I've been living here at this home perched above the Great South Bay of Long Island. This house has been a place that I almost call my laboratory, where I've evolved as an interior designer and created a home for my family and myself. Can you feel that? That's relaxation. The theme of this house is Americana. I wanted every element of this home to be something that you really wanted to engage with. Here in the entry, the staircase is carpeted in an animal print. While some people think it's unconventional, I can assure you that it is the most worry-free material. I converted a wood and steel coal mining cart into a vanity for the guest powder room. This is one of many surprises that you will discover as we explore the home. This is the living room. While we use all the spaces to the fullest throughout the year, this is the space that we use most often in the wintertime. The fireplace runs 24 hours a day. Believe it or not, we actually roast chestnuts over the open fire. I chose this sofa fabric because it's reminiscent of American rag rug fabrics that were developed in the 18th and 19th centuries. I even had the walls hand stenciled in designs reminiscent of early Americana to add layers and depth to the space. And the best part is when we fling open these doors. Sea breeze, bucolic gardens, and the bay beyond. Kitchens are the heart of any home, and we want to create a space here where everyone could gather. In keeping with the theme of Americana, the ceilings are adorned with all these incredible pieces that we've collected throughout the years. And one of my favorite pieces is this carnival carousel cow that I found on yet another trip to upstate New York. The funny thing is, is that it's both a cow and a bull all at once. To me, red is quintessential Americana, and for that reason, you'll find red in each and every space of this house, including the stools, the feature wall, and the apples. This is my happy place. This is our porch, where we spend hour after hour during the summers and the warmer months. I actually built this in design school, and I wanted it perfectly aligned with the dining room so that the relationship between interior and exterior was flawless. The views really are the design star in every room of this home. And part of my job was pairing beautiful furnishings and fabrics to complement that view. I'm so glad that you could join me today so that I could share a place that has meant so much to me through the years. It is a space that continues to inspire me every day. Thank you. Don't go anywhere because just after the break, we are in the Windy City with interior designer Aaron Shakur. We'll be right back.
Welcome back everyone. Now we take a special trip out to the Windy City with Chicago-based design star Erin Shakur. Erin took her client's historical home and completely remade it for today's living. Take a look. Hi, I'm Erin Shakur with Shakur Interiors and we are in historic, beautiful Kenwood in Chicago, Illinois. This house was in total disrepair and our teams came in, collaborated with the client, the architect and the builder. Today, this house is absolutely stunning and I cannot wait to show you what we've done. So the first thing you notice when you come into this space, you can see the gorgeous sunken living room. The client had a very traditional aesthetic initially, and we talked long about how we could make this house modern and edgy and still keep her traditional aesthetic. And so what we did was we paired existing furnishings with new modern furnishings. We also did a lot of refinishing and refurbishing so that it would pair and marry well with the decor overall. So in the family room, we decided to provide different types of seating for a multitude of purposes and functions. But I love how the atrium and all the light from this space just brightens up everything. All of this natural light, you cannot beat that. And we're able to use dark colors, bright colors, and a variety of textures in this space. It's a gathering space, much like the dining room. And this salmon kind of coral color that's on the walls is a beautiful backdrop for this gorgeous crystal chandelier that the clients absolutely love. Also in this open floor plan, we have the beautiful kitchen. At one point, this was a closed off walled in kitchen with a tiny narrow door that allowed you to come out into the dining area. But here it's been completely opened up and there's a large island in this space. And because the clients love to entertain, they decided to put two ovens in and one is hidden here at the back of the island. It's a little secret door, so to speak. On our way up to the primary suite, I want to stop here and take note of this beautiful original stained glass. And if you look up top, there's a star and crescent, which is emblematic of the Muslim religion. And this house was previously owned by Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who commissioned this amongst the other homes on this block for his children. Here in the primary suite, which has a very regal feel to it, we decided to juxtapose and combine traditional elements with a more modern color palette. We decided to mix texture and pattern that keeps the room looking more classic. It also includes this gorgeous bathroom infused with black and white porcelain and polished nickel fixtures with a beautiful freestanding tub. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're absolutely excited to share this project with you and I'm thrilled to be able to work with clients who wanna take risks and collaborate to make stunning and dynamic spaces. Hopefully we'll see you soon in a project in Chicago. Stick around, coming up just after the break, we explore this serene home in the heart of Venice. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now for a touch of Tulum, right in the heart of Venice, California. This beautiful modern home is the perfect balance of well thought out interiors and exceptional exterior spaces. From coffered ceilings in a glass encased hallway to a courtyard pool and a dreamy patio. See for yourself. Hi, I'm Juliette Honan, and welcome to my gorgeous listing in Venice, California, 918 Millwood Avenue, also known as the Tulum House. Why did I call it that? Well, look at all the trees. It kind of feels like Tulum, doesn't it? This is a fantastic place to hang out and eat. Amazing indoor-outdoor vibe here. Let's check out the inside. This is a beautiful, warm, modern home with incredible details. Look at the coffered ceiling, the beautiful fireplace. It's got an incredible indoor, outdoor feel. Just look all the way through. An amazing dining area, not just inside the house, but also out. And a very gorgeous kitchen with stainless steel counters, which I love. And then, of course, we go to the swimming pool. Come check it out. 
So I know it's a bit unorthodox to be lying down while you're selling a house, but this particular area in this house is so zen. So what is it about this house that's so great? Well, there are two structures. Over there, you've got an office, you've got your laundry room, you have two car garage plus two car parking spaces out and a great bathroom that you can walk in, get rid of the sand and go into the kitchen and to the rest of the house. So upstairs is the primary suite connected by a skywalk. I guess we're gonna have to go upstairs to check it out. So look at the ceilings in this room. Beautiful lights, kind of concealed. Everything is built in. You've got these lights here. Very handy, electrical, you know, whatever you need to do. Maybe plug in your phone. Great doors that open out. Again, indoor, outdoor feel. And then this bathroom with this stunning stone. A tub, which every British woman needs. And then a fabulous shower. Just look at the stonework in here. This place is absolutely gorgeous and so Venice. And this is your iconic sunset shop. Check out those palm trees. So we're back where we started, but you know what? I've got to run because it's lunchtime and the restaurants in Venice are delicious. Bye for now. Don't go anywhere because just after the break, we explore this unique architectural estate on Long Island's East End, meant to evoke all the things we love about being at the beach. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are wrapping up this week's show in Sagaponic with architect Lee Skolnick. Lee conceived of the home as a glass bridge hovering above the landscape, yet he grounded the structure with organic materials. The result is an ode to its beautiful surroundings, including the sky, the sand, and of course, the sea. Take a look. Hi, I'm Lee Skolnick. I am the founding principal of Skolnick Architecture Plus Design Partnership in New York. And I just want to welcome you to this fabulous beach house. Every project that we do, we're always looking for the essence of what people's lives are like. And these were friends of mine, but I still wanted to have some kind of thematic underpinning for the design. And so we distilled it down to five essences, sun, sea, sky, sand and storm and we said that's it what we wanted to do was live in nature so you know the experience of a home all of a sudden you get this big panoramic view of the entire front of the house and what comes across hopefully are two things one is that the materiality the, the stone the wood the stucco they, they add up to something almost zen-like. The second piece is you also understand that this house is a bridge. There are two kind of pylons at either side that are more solid and they're made out of stone, but the center of the home is all glass, and that's the bridge. So you, you get up to the top of the stairs and you are now in this glass bridge and it all lays out in front of you. The kitchen, had to be really functional. We made a gigantic island so that everybody could sit on stools and do their thing. Interesting material, we used cast concrete because of its durability. There's a, a cozy little a breakfast nook in the corner with a banquet built in. And then from the sink, you're looking out at this wonderful view. When you come into the living room, this is where it really explodes. Really tall ceiling, literally the geographic center of this house to define space. We use these canopies, which are made up of finished beams, you know, very delicate. So I laid out this fireplace and behind that, you discover another stairway. So that stair leads you up to the principal bedroom. We made a very special door. It's a pivoting door and it's all walnut and it's quite wide because I felt like you know, you've arrived. We floated the bed in the center of the room so that it felt very airy. And because on one side, it's all glass looking out towards the ocean. There's a headboard behind it, which is also a cabinet which separates it from the seating area. In front of you, there's a fireplace. 
We also did a screened in porch right off of the principal bedroom and it actually has a little fireplace as well. We are out here in the Hamptons and the summer is a golden time and everybody wants to be around the pool. So we kind of took our cues from resorts. So, you know, it has all those amenities that you would associate with a place that you only get to go to for a couple of weeks a year on vacation. Here you can have it any day. I hope you enjoyed your tour of this house and perhaps gotten some insight into how a narrative at the beginning of a project can inform all the design moves so that in the end, it embodies the owner's values. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content, subscribe to Open House TV.